Hello and welcome back. In the previous lecture, we showed the conversion of geodetic coordinates to Cartesian coordinates. And the principle was that if we shift the x, a, y plane of the coordinate system, then what? To the, so that the origin of the new system is the intersection of the normal to the ellipsoid and the z-axis of the system. In this case, and based on this geometry, the x and y coordinates defined in the new system is the same with the x and y coordinates of the original system. So based on this simple geometry, we could show that these are the formula for conversion of the geodetic coordinate to Cartesian coordinate. Of course, for the z coordinate, it was a little bit more complicated, and we have provided the proof and showed how to drive this formula for the z coordinate. Now, the goal is to do the opposite. We have x, y, and z, or the Cartesian coordinate, and we need the geodetic coordinate. This is not as simple as we did for spherical coordinates. But since the ellipsoid is rotational, then for the lambda, we can use the same principle or the same geometry. So in that case, we have a right angle triangle here. And lambda is this angle. And tangent of this lambda will be this side, which is y, over this side. So, there simply we can determine lambda without any difficulty. And we can take arc tangent or tangent inverse to determine the lambda angle. Let us see how phi can be determined. It's not as simple as it is in spherical coordinate system. But before that, let me emphasize on one parameter, the distance from the origin and the projection of the point to X, O, and Y system is one, which is here, and it is actually equal to this side is this formula. It means that this P or this projection can be determined from X and Y coordinates of the point. Now let us insert X and Y coordinates based on the formula that I given in the previous slide and we will get this one. As you see, this part, this part is common in both terms here. If I factorize it, I will come to that. And since cosine squared of an angle plus the sine squared of the same angle is equal to one, then we come to a new formula for P. P already we have it from, from Cartesian coordinates. Now we have P in terms of geodetic coordinates. So, as you see, if I solve H from this formula, I come to simply this. This formula says that if I have P, which I already have from Cartesian coordinates, I can determine H or the geodetic height if I have N and phi. Phi or the geodetic latitude is also unknown for us. And also n itself is also function of the geodetic latitude as well. So it is important that first we determine the geodetic latitude to compute the geodetic height. Now let us see how we can determine the geodetic latitude. First write z coordinate over p. p can be determined from the x and y coordinates. And the formula for the z is that. We have already proved it. 
And also in the previous slide, I share you P is equal to this term. So if I simplify these two, I multiply N to one, or to multiply to minus E2, I get this formula. And sine of phi over cosine of phi will be tangent of phi. Therefore, I can simply write this formula. As I said, n plus h over n plus h, one, and this term over n plus h is the same here. Well, we want to determine phi. Then I solve this equation for phi. How I multiply both sides by the inverse of this term, and after that, I will take the arc tangent or tangent inverse of both sides. Then I come to this one. Well, you may think that it is done, but there is a problem here. The problem is that n is also a function of phi, but we want phi. Phi is unknown, but we need it to compute phi. Also, h is also function of phi as we showed before. So such equations can be solved iteratively. I need an a priori value for phi so that I can put them here and compute n for them. And then I can compute h for the geodetic height and then solve this equation and get the new phi. Then the new phi should should be used to compute new n and h. How? n based on this formula. I based on this is phi, new phi, I compute new n, and from the new n, I compute a new h. And after that, this new n and h comes back to the formula, I will get phi i plus 2.7. I will repeat this process until the solution converts. It means that phi doesn't change. So, since I do not have the initial value for the phi, so I don't know what to put inside the initial to start the iteration. Normally, we consider n0 or the zero iteration or initial value for n as a a is the semi-major on the axis of the ellipsoid, and it can be approximated by this formula. We have the Cartesian coordinates. We have A from the ellipsoid, the semi-major axis of the ellipsoid, and E is the first eccentricity. And in that case, you can initialize the process. You put N0 as R, and h0 here instead of h, and you get a new phi. New phi sits here, you get new n, and both n and phi sits here to get h. And again, this process is repeated. This part called initial values, and it is repeated on until we have these conditions. Either we can use the condition for h for the height or for the phi and uh, epsilon is normally considered to be the power of minus 10. when the difference between the last two phi or the last two height which of course the absolute value or smaller than a times e epsilon or the phi minus the previous phi absolute value is smaller than epsilon, we can stop iteration. So we consider the solution is conversion. Let us see this in an example. Example, we have Cartesian coordinates of a point, and we want to determine the geodetic coordinates over this ellipsoid, which has these parameters. So I do not solve 
lambda because it's too simple. You can do it yourself. The focus will be on phi and h. h is determined or computed by this formula. x coordinates, y coordinates, and z coordinates are here. This is the semi semi major axis of the ellipsoid, and this is the first eccentricity. And if we solve this numerically, we get this value. Now we compute p. p just u is function of x and y coordinates. We have computed p, and you get this value. And if you remember the formula, this part is z, which already have it here from the on the problem p we already computed it here that's express eccentricity of the ellipsoid as that's n actually but since in the first approximation or for initial value we have considered n is equal to a which is here then we put it n instead of n we put this a here the formula we had here n plus h n is equal to semi major axis of the ellipsoid and height if you, you look at here height is negative this is why it is minus here but the formula is positive if you compute this one and take the tangent inverse or r tangent you will get this phi now in the next round we will compute the new n value. So how? Because I have now this phi, new phi. This new phi comes here, and I get n. And from this new n and the new phi, I get h1. Now, this h1 and n1 should be inserted back to the formula to get a new phi. So after inserting these values in the formula, I get new phi, which is phi 2. And phi 2 is inserted to the formula for the n here. As you see, this is phi 2. I have already computed this here. It comes to this formula here. I get a new n. And the new n come, and phi both comes to the formula for computing h2. And I get a better value for h and now this new phi this new h and the new phi new phi value will be inserted to the formula again to compute an updated value for the phi so this is the h this sitting here the new n comes here and we get the new phi which is S1. And since it is very close, but not exactly, so the new phi I have now, I will compute the new n based on the new phi. And from the new n, a new h, I get a new n, a new phi, I get a new h. And I again repeat the process, put the h here, put the, the n here, and when I compute phi 4, it will be the same. So it means the solution is convergent, but I have done this up to fourth iteration. However, if you want to get to millimeter level for the height, you have to repeat this more, this process more until the difference between the last two h you drive is less than one millimeter. That's the whole process.